right? We're learning peace now when chaos exists. Amen. So that when true peace comes, my mind, we can really appreciate it. Amen. Right? Because chaos will end. We know that. Chaos will end. Satan has an end. All the devils have an end. Even hell has an end. Mm. Death itself has an end. Mm. Chaos will come to an end. And you would have put on muscle because you've learned to struggle in peace during all that chaos. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at um, John 14. We're going to put some elementary pieces together, but hopefully you'll see the whole thing by the time we're all said and done. 1421, uh, Jesus is speaking and he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Mm. Mm. Go through, especially the Old Testament, and look who God manifests himself to. It says, The word of God came. To such and such. The word of God came to Samuel. The word of God came to David. The word of God came to Solomon. The word of God came. And those people are listed, many of them, in Hebrews 11, the so-called Hall of Faith. All right? Especially when you get to the book of Judges. Only three judges of all the judges right. did God actually come to. And they're listed in the Hall of Faith. So we, this is something we clearly want. We want the word of God to come to us, to manifest in us. But he, he gives a condition. You must have the commandments and obey the commandments. The commandments. Key, key. All right? The half part is where really I think a lot of Christians are failing. They're failing on their obedience, but the reason they're failing on their obedience is they don't do the half part. Mm -hmm. They don't have the commandments. Mm -hmm. They don't have the commandments. Go to John 8. Let's look at what God himself, Jesus, through Jesus, spoke as to how to have the commandments. The yeah. commandments. Yeah. Come on. Yes. In John 8, we're going to start at verse 30. He had been <coughs> preaching. And many people at this point believed what he was saying. Look at verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, let's pause. So from our perspective, these are Christians. They believe. Because a lot of people believe that's, that's it. Oh, just they need to believe. Well, he speaks to believers now. But he doesn't say, well done. He gives them all work. Yep. What does he say? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free all conditioned on if you continue in my word which has two two aspects I've got to know the word and I've got to do the word I've got to know the word I've got to do the word I've got to take the entire Bible and filter it through the eyes of Jesus. I've got to filter it through reading the New Testament. So anyone who tells you the Old Testament is not worth reading doesn't know the Bible. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't make a, a, a distinction here. He said, if you continue in my word. Last time I checked, all 66 books yeah. comprise yeah. the word of God. <coughs> so continue. Faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Faith and works. Faith and works. Faith and works. Because we know faith without works is dead. dead. Faith without works is dead. And as scripture I just read, let's go to Hebrews 5.8, just so you have it, and certainly a scripture you should have underlined as well <coughs> in your Bible, if it isn't, as we're talking about getting to know God and then going through the suffering that's necessary to become sons of God. 
Verse 8 of Hebrews 5 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey, obey him. him. Amen. Hmm. It's going to get repetitive. <laughs> okay. Keep it coming. <laughs> it's going to get repetitive. But I pray the Lord you'll continue to see. Now go to Second Timothy. <coughs> <laughs> but dealing with suffering, we're dealing with persecution, tribulation, and changing your perspective to one you first and first and foremost you expect it. Secondly, you are at a place where what Jesus said applies to you. You have peace. Yes. Wow. Amen. Look at verse twelve of Second Timothy uh, chapter three. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. That's not underlined. Underline that. So you never walk out of here anymore, listen to any foolishness that's really a false doctrine, which is preaching escape over suffering. The struggle is over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the struggle is over, yes. No, <laughs> Go to, um, uh, let's go to Romans 8. Hmm. 